Hi everyone, welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server Introduction to Identity and Access Management Training video. In this video, we are going to discuss how traditional access management systems operate and their issues, an overview to IAM concepts and its benefits, WSO2 Identity Server features and its benefits. Identity and Access Management or IAM is identified as the security discipline that securely stores and manages user identities and access privileges, ensures identity of users so you know they are who they say they are, and grant access to the right resources at the right time for the right reasons, provides a better user experience to the end users, meets increasingly rigorous compliance requirements, increases productivity while reducing IT costs, helps to get apps to market faster. IAM is a crucial undertaking for any growing enterprise. Before diving into IAM, let's look at how a traditional organization infrastructure manages identities and access privileges. In the traditional access management approach, identities and privileges are managed within the application premises compelling users to create user accounts for each application that they want to access. For example, if John Doe needs to access three different applications, he should create three separate accounts for each application and maintain the corresponding credentials separately. Clearly, this traditional application access management approach is not capable of achieving modern business requirements and security challenges. With this approach, there is a higher chance of data breaches. John might use the same password for all the applications or use separate but simple passwords so that he can remember them easily. And secure access management might not be the priority of all the applications and there is no guarantee that all the applications manage passwords securely. This approach also has minimum user experience. When you want to log into applications, you have to remember each login credential and each login experience differs from each other. If you are a new employee, you have to wait till the admin team creates user accounts for each application. For a small organization with just a few applications, this may be bearable. But if you have hundreds of applications, imagine the waiting time before you can log into these applications. The next prominent concern is governance. When you have to introduce a new application to the organization, you need to implement user management capabilities for that application from scratch. This method is also less agile as you have to create all the users all over again within the new application. These issues result in low productivity and high IT costs. Moreover, it is not easy for traditional access management systems to comply with regulations. Therefore, there had to be a better way to handle these shortcomings of traditional identity and access management. Modern identity and access management is increasingly aligned with business needs and help to overcome these challenges. Let's now dive into these IAM concepts. Centralized access management and access control involve users being managed within a single component called the Identity Provider or the IDP. All the applications trust the IDP and the users log into applications through the IDP. This eliminates the need for multiple passwords and eliminates the need to manage identities at the application layer. If you want to introduce a new application, you can simply integrate it with the IDP and it will manage user identities on behalf of your application. The process of creating and managing user accounts and user identities is called user provisioning. When a centralized user management system is in place, you can create users in the IDP and there is no need to manually create accounts in all the applications. However, if a system requires user information to exist within the application, this can be achieved by automatically sending a user creation request to the required applications without sending the user's sensitive information. If you wish to delete a user account, it can be done by simply deleting the user from the IDP. Single Sign-On or SSO eliminates the need for users to enter the login credentials every time they log into an application. When a user tries to log into an application, the application redirects the user to the IDP for authentication. After a successful authentication, 
the IDP sends the authenticated user information back to each application. When the same user tries to access another application in the system, the IDP seamlessly logs the user in without prompting the user to log in again. There are standards such as SAML, OIDC, and WS Federation that define these requests and responses in advance. In the past, the username and password were more than enough to authenticate a user. With the advancement of technology, password-based authentication no longer securely protects your user accounts. There are numerous attacks that can easily break the password-based authentication. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, emerged as an answer to this problem. It creates a layered defense and makes it more difficult for an unauthorized person to access a target system. Authentication factors in MFA rely on two or more independent credentials of the three categories. Knowledge factors, something you know, such as a password. Possession factors, something you have, such as a mobile phone. Inheritance factors, something you are, such as a fingerprint. With a combination of two or more of these factors, the user is authenticated. Even though multi-factor authentication provides additional and better security, it shouldn't be a one-size-fits-all solution. With adaptive authentication, you can dynamically change the steps involved in authentication depending on the user's risk profile and behavior. This enables an organization to precisely apply the right level of gateway security to each and every login request instead of issuing static procedures for everyone to follow. Remembering passwords is never easy and passwords are susceptible to many attacks. With passwordless authentication, the user instead offers another form of authentication, like a biometric, hardware key, or clicking a magic link to login. Passwordless authentication can increase security and user experience as these factors are nearly impossible to copy or steal and do not need to be remembered. When a user logs into an application, the default identifier that the user is asked for is the username. With multi-attribute login, users can have the option of entering an alternate login identifier such as a mobile number or an email address. Identity Federation enables access to multiple systems across different organizations. In the current world, businesses will continue to grow with acquisitions and mergers. With this, you will have to grant permission to users from other organizations to access your applications. It's not practical to create all the users for each application. Instead, we can create a trust relationship between the IDPs. When a user from one organization wants to access an application in another organization, the request will first come to the IDP of the own organization and then be forwarded to the IDP of the other organization. The user can then access the application as the IDPs now trust each other. This is called Identity Federation. In modern society, most users have accounts in well-known identity providers such as Facebook and Google. Hence, we need to let users bring their own identities and access the system, which is more important in a consumer-driven world. In social login, Identity Federation is accomplished using such well-known IDPs. If you are a business that engages with other businesses, such as your partners or other business customers, you may need to provide them access to your applications and services. B2B Customer Identity and Access Management, or B2B SIAM, entails managing access to these external entities involved in a B2B model by facilitating a customized login experience to your applications based on the needs of each organization. Today, privacy is a key differentiator in any business as the IAM system is responsible for users and their identity management, it also works as the regulatory compliance enabler in your system. If you are an EU citizen, you would have already heard of GDPR. CCPA is another emerging privacy standard in California, USA. Now that you have learned the main concepts of an IAM solution, let's learn about WSO2 Identity Server. WSO2 Identity Server is a 100% open-source IAM solution which is under the business-friendly Apache 2.0 license.
Identity Server comes with multiple deployment options. Apart from on-prem deployments, Asgardio is our public SaaS solution and IPK is the private SaaS solution. The Identity Server's inherent extensibility helps organizations build a tailor-made IAM platform. Globally, we manage over a billion user accounts in our 280-plus direct subscription customers and 1,200-plus OEM-driven deployments in many industry verticals including banking and finance, healthcare, education, and governments. We provide 24-7 production and development support while operating globally, having main offices in USA, UK, Germany, Brazil, Australia, UAE, Malaysia, and Sri Lanka. In 2022 and 2020, WSO2 Identity Server was named an overall leader and product leader by Kupinga Call Leadership Compass on Siam platforms. In 2022 and 2020 Q4, WSO2 Identity Server was named as a strong performer by the Forrester Wave Customer Identity and Access Management. In 2019, WSO2 Identity Server was named as an overall leader by Kupinga Call Leadership Compass on Identity APIs. We are also the API security provider in WSO2 API Manager, which is a leader in the Forrester Wave API management solutions. Further, in Gartner Peer Insights, Identity Server is rated 4.4 out of 5. The key features of WSO2 Identity Server are single sign-on and identity federation, identity bridging, adaptive and strong multi-factor authentication, accounts management and identity provisioning, fine-grained access control, API and microservices security, B2B SIAM, and identity analytics and privacy. There are several unique benefits that WSO2 Identity Server can offer. As it is built with open standards and under open source licenses, it avoids vendor lock-in. Identity Server's extensible architecture allows customization to build unique IAM use cases. It also provides ownership of the extensions you use. Further, it's a proven IAM solution for large-scale deployments with millions of users. It provides effortless integration with cloud and on-premise applications, third-party authentication systems, and social identity providers. The connectors in the WSO2 Identity Server Connector Store facilitates integration with external systems. It enables hassle-free deployment and low-cost maintenance that frees you from high IT costs. It also allows to opt for on-premise, public cloud, or private cloud deployment, ensuring that your organization's needs are met with precision and adaptability. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got to know about traditional access management and its issues. Then we got an overview of IAM concepts and benefits. Finally, we got introduced to WSO2 Identity Server's features and benefits. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is iam-dev at wso2.org. In Stack Overflow, you can tag your queries with wso2-identity-server, or you can join our Discord server using the invite. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to meet you in another exciting training video.